Wow, this price action is painfully boring. Up and down, up and down, up and down. Just make it stop. So, what has been going on in the markets in the past week or so? While this indecisive price action may feel completely meaningless at first, I do think there is logic and structure behind it. First things first, in our last video I was talking about this bullish doji candle, which would likely lead us higher before encountering resistance toward the local top. We then had a fake out above the top followed by a series of zigzagging pumps and dumps. It became evident to me halfway through the formation that what we've been forming here is a symmetrical triangle at a pivotal decision point. This shorter term triangle is only evident by going from the daily to the 4 hour candles. So what are the possible outcomes here? Well, just like mentioned in my last video, the bulls are hoping for the price action to shoot up here without touching the 20 week moving average. This would also make the stochastic RSI and MACD histogram curve back up. It is incredible that we're still stuck at the halfway point here after three weeks. If this triangle does turn out to be a springboard out of our reaccumulation area, then I could easily see us skyrocketing past 120k before having the risk of a new correction. Now let's look at the bearish scenario. The reasonable bears are hoping for us to stay in a longer term reaccumulation area, with this recent triangle being a smaller redistribution area toward the top of the range of the larger reaccumulation zone. If the triangle breaks to the downside, the stochastic RSI and MACD will both continue cooling down. A MACD crossover would be almost inevitable in this scenario. Also, a breakdown of the symmetrical triangle would most likely result in a move below our currently established low. So which scenario do I see as more likely? Well, classical TA would give the bulls a higher chance because the theory is that the formation is more likely to continue in the direction preceding the move, which would bring the price higher. However, when it comes to Bitcoin and my own personal experience, I have seen these formations break to the downside more often than not regardless of the direction of the previous move. Therefore, it could honestly go either way. When looking at the Bitcoin power law bands, we have managed to hold support above the power law for quite a while here, so this could possibly be a good sign from Bitcoin that we are just preparing for another bullish move. Now let's take a look at our other power law indicators. Starting with the log lock graph, we can also see that we're holding above the median line, at least for the time being. Let's see if we can continue holding above it. The good thing is that the bubble projection has been able to catch up to the price section more and more as time has passed over here. By the way guys, we've had some questions about the time scale on our log log indicator. As some of you may know, time cannot be natively displayed in a logarithmic fashion on TradingView. Therefore, our Luxalgo team has created a clever workaround in the form of a separate time scale which is visible when zooming out a little bit. Therefore, always ignore TradingView's default timescale over here when we're looking at the log lock graph, because it's just a limitation of TradingView. Now to the Bitcoin power lock clock. We're now at 12 minutes past 9, so 48 Bitcoin minutes, or around 11 human months left until our projected top. Now to the detrended oscillator. Nothing exciting here as of right now we're still going back and forth between orange and cooler shades. This will either be a local top followed by a crash before definitively piercing into the orange bubble area, or just a shorter term springboard before going back up. Now to the local Hearst exponent. We've been consistently slowing down over here as we've been moving closer to the top. We have now finally reached a darker orange shade over here as well. If our symmetrical triangle breaks to the downside, then we will likely roll over here pretty soon. In this case, the next local Hearst exponent bottom would likely be a great entry point. If the triangle breaks to the upside, we will probably have a more prolonged top over here with the next Hearst exponent bottom lining up with a new reaccumulation area, somewhere north of our current price. Now let's get to the Bitcoin news. As we all know, President Trump was recently inaugurated and he has been passing some much-anticipated legislation for Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. 
For example, one of his new executive orders is all about promoting the advancement of cryptocurrencies in the US and developing a national digital asset stockpile. This could definitely create some extra buying pressure for Bitcoin, especially considering the likely outcome of other nations eventually doing the same thing due to the fear of being left behind. However, this does not mean that Bitcoin will suddenly become exponential. As stated in our biggest power law misconceptions video, all of our power law calculations have actually anticipated these events, which will still barely be enough to stay on our power law path to crazy valuations such as $10 million per Bitcoin in around 20 years or so. However, here's where I also have to mention some disappointing news. As many of you know, President Trump and his team also launched not one but several meme coins designed to exploit his fans. Nobody really cares about the legal fine print about these meme coins not being meant as investments. The fact of the matter is that I don't think it's classy or ethical for the President of the United States to pull a hawk to a with an 80% pre-mined coin. Some of you have asked me about investing in these and my view is pretty straightforward. While it is absolutely possible that these coins will have some new pumps in the future that could multiply your money in a heartbeat, putting money in these is not much different from putting everything on red in blackjack. Bitcoin and these types of crypto should not even be compared with each other. They are not the same thing. In other news, Trump kept his promise to release Ross Ulbricht, the founder of the Silk Road dark web marketplace. Trump made a deal with the libertarians to free him in exchange for their vote. It is good to see that he kept his promise. My personal view on this is that Ross did deserve some prison time when taking all of the facts into consideration. However, two life sentences without the possibility of parole was definitely absurd and a form of weaponization of the justice system. I think most Bitcoiners are happy about this outcome. Ross does not seem like a bad guy, so hopefully he will make better decisions in the future now that he has been given a new chance at life again. Some of you might not agree with my take on these news, but I'm fine with that. Know that I'll always keep it real with you guys and mention both the good and the bad without going along with the hype train. In conclusion, we're about to break out of this triangle formation over here and I hope I can get this uploaded before it happens. Just beware of any possible fakeouts that can often happen with formations like these. The closer we get to the apex, the more likely a breakout is. There have even been some very rare cases where a decisive move has come a little bit after reaching the apex, so let's see. Anyway, today is Sunday, so a breakout today is a little bit less likely. If you would like to support our work, consider subscribing to our incredible LuxAlgo indicators for TradingView. The process is very simple and LuxAlgo grants automatic access to your account. If you need any help, just message me in our Telegram group or on X. We also have a great merch store at bitpositonstore.com with some awesome designs and that is another way to support our work. This is Saverio speaking and as always, thanks for watching.